two, one, hello. Um, this lecture is about, um, as I keep saying, my method is Socratic, meaning we, we are interlocutors, even in this asynchronous class. Um, I'm uh, not here meant to spout facts, but to elicit responses and questions and elicit curiosity, um, a much um, maligned uh, of, uh, sort of feature of human psychology nowadays. We're looking for patterns, but we're looking for a way out. Uh, one of the, my little literary Bibles is um, Lord of the Flies. Um, many of you read it or had to read it in high school about boys School, English schoolboys shot down or, or crashed near an island and um, they form their own um, uh, sort of uh, uh, society um, on this island. There's a group, I think it's Ralph, um, who wants to get everyone off the island. Uh, the progressive, the, the, the realist, the one who's going to have agency and take risk. <laughs> And the others find this pig on the island, kill the pig, and they want to worship the pig's head. This is kind of business as usual, a response to um, kind of this internal tribal order um, uh, and um, devising this religion. These boys devise this religion to suss out what they perceive as the freeloaders. Um, so these two groups split. Um, people who worship things that are no longer effective or never were, but provide some cogency, some kind of ritual conservatism in the face of chaos, the chaos of being marooned on this island. And then um, another group who try, tries to get off, fix the problem, do um, uh, play with things because they're useful. They could be useful. They could solve problems. They could, uh, it begs the question, let's just get off. And the other group says, why? You don't like what we have going here? It's much better than the place we came. Um, one was an adolescent response. Um, uh, we often assume that the ritualized is the mature response, adulting, but often it's the adolescent response to, uh, to problems. And we're facing a lot of problems. So we're making devised pieces. I just made one with Rick, focusing on um, a compare and contrast with King Lear, the points in King Lear, and um, uh, his father who returned from the Pacific War, perhaps a, a shattered and disbelieving um, Marine, uh, ex-Marine who has to buy into the pig's head of Eisenhower America. This is the pig's head. You own a car, even if it bleeds you money. You have a small Cape Cod because these are your dividends. It's a house. You hopefully find an obedient spouse, um, pre-feminist spouse, because that's another aspect of the pig's head. Um, um, did these things really ever exist? Not in the truest sense of human agency. These um, are far more, uh, many more val uh, variables to this. Um, how else is Eisenhower America like the pig's head? Uh, it was to be worshipped. These were contrived values in the middle of a Cold War, a nuclear um, brinksmanship which we still have, at least we forget. Um, the world could end at any moment. I remember going up and down as a kid, up and down the basement stairs um, during a couple of these close scares with the Soviet Union. Um, this was meant to be a collision of lifestyle. The communists against free market capitalism both had their own versions of the pig's head um, to be worshiped. Um, and that led to an inability to have a dialogue with getting off the island. Um, getting off the island, in our case, uh, jumping a few decades in the future, we see exponential trends that will shape humanity. We are trying to design stuff to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem, not to just defer with the group and say, let's worship the pig's head, it's always worked in the past. Um, 
let's do it, you know, and, and, and bully those people who don't want to do it, bully those people who want to get off the island, the people who um, want to think, I hate that term, think outside of the box, but think outside of the pig's head. Um, what is true utility? What is beyond exchange? Why the big car? Why the little uh, rip-off Cape Cod house? Why the 2.5 children? Why the obedient pre-feminist wife? Um, uh, who's there as a sub-economy just to produce taxpayers and soldiers for the next iteration. And these were supposedly the spoils of war to the winners. Um, we can't imagine what was going on with the losers, uh, Japan, Germany, and uh, obviously these countries recovered far faster than England, which was the big loser. Um, it totally lost its overseas empires. It was um, took a few decades before that country sort of woke up and to stop uh, worshipping the pig's head and get off their island, literally, um, into the world. They still have issues with this. They still defer. We see many proud cultures, old cultures, maybe culture you came from has so-called core values. With this lecture, I want to say, what? <laughs> how can we respond to what is um, slapping us in the face, um, having us get off the island? Uh, not retreating into uh, group psychosis and worshiping the pig's head, as we see over and over in um, economies, in so-called ritualized form and so forth. So um, how do we do a piece? How do we make a piece? How do we make people come to our piece? How do we make people debate our piece, you know, open up engagement? Um, <clears throat> one of the first things is I keep saying, you and I are actually, from the first time in maybe the history of the world, in the same generation. As Douglas Rushkoff had pointed out, um, we are in this tyrannical now. Nothing seems outside of this now. Uh, young children, younger than you guys, um, because of the interconnectivity through social media, respond more to each other than they do to parents, which they consider obsolete and um, pushing them toward unrealistic goals. The goal of getting off the island. Um, often uh, social media makes us worship the pig's head of, of ideolo ideological impasses, which, uh, you know, what do you believe? Uh, belief is that thing that only goes so far until you have to discard it and work with what um, uh, is really uh, confronting you um, in terms of getting off the island. Um, there's many pig's head operations within social media. It tends to be Lord of the Flies, tends toward a tribal group dynamics, people splitting into their little groups to solidify around a static idea. One of these static ideas is that society proceeds in a linear fashion. We talked in Rick's piece, uh, Earl Lear, this idea of Lear. Um, is there such a thing as progress? Can we build a secular society around progress, ecumenical for all? Apart from the relative little pig's heads that everyone's worshiping around the world, can we respond to things such as global warming, um, uh, uh, untenable carbon footprints, overpopulation, all these things that point to a Malthusian meltdown? Yes, this is the subject of a 100 level class um, because um, you don't want to contribute to the pig's head. You want to get off this island with your art, with your creativity, with your little humble little sketching at night with uh, uh, knowing 3D printing, with knowing uh, that you have to shift gears and get a job in uh, using marketing and social media, knowing that a lot of your job will be PR, will be um, sales personship, um, and all these things um, that the weak of mind want to just assume, oh, we're not, we, by accident we landed on this island, by accident these things came before us, we don't need to study them, all we need to do is worship the pig's head because it's there, because the boss says we have to worship it. 
what is exponential? Um, uh, enter, we are entering in a period of accelerated change. These changes happen very rapidly. 2005, the Vatican, no one has cell phones. 2013, everyone's photographing the speech by the Pope. Um, this is a subject that I will cover in um, Italy by going to the Ferrari factory, come if you want, um, and Detroit. What happened to these two modalities? One of the recent things I've heard on the YouTube is that in northern Spain, northern Italy, um, uh, unionists and collective um, ownership of some factories have actually stimulated these areas into growth, whereas the the command and control um, ideals of Henry Ford, who represented Detroit, um, have a place for employment and they can use um, the, the very same items that were formerly made for wealthier people, they can use it so the cost is lower. But what did in the command and control aspect of design for Detroit. The major point of this whole lecture is that we think our blind spot comes from the fact that we have lived in a linear world. There's linear progression. Um, but due to Metcalfe's law that a system, a, a, a connective system is changed exponentially by the amount of inputs given to it, um, that these are uh, exponential changes due to the amount of connectivity that these, um, these new um, rivers, roads, uh, seacoasts make. And of course, they're not rivers, roads, seacoasts, or even television. This is the internet. This is interconnectivity with finance, which happened in the 80s. The Stony Brook Math Department it was, uh, had a lot to do with the quants there. Jim Simons and such has a lot to do with that. But um, this is what I mean that within a span of 15 years, me, you, a 12-year-old, instead of having 180 degree shifts in our from generation to generation 20 years, this all happened within... 15 years, and we're still unpacking it. So why do art? Why express ourselves? Why even consider turning it into a career when most of these lectures have been this lecture about be a Swiss army knife? Open up to, to self uh, reinvention, open yourself up to self redesign. Um, this is what we're up against, a mindset that's linear but in reality, um, this is why for the past two years I've been pushing people towards spatial I.O. I don't know where VR, social VR, AR is going. It doesn't seem to go away. Uh, it's been around since the 90s. It's not reaching exponential forms. I think largely now because of COVID that people are tired of being isolated inside. This is why I signed... Um, the machine stops um, as one of our texts. This text now is King Lear. Um, there's been a breakdown. Um, in a sense, King Lear's reaction is ex uh, what happens to King Lear is exponential too. It happens in the now. He decides to abdicate um, uh, because he's tired, old, evil, I, I don't know what, um, or just lazy. Uh, uh, the movie wants to make him doddering, uh, losing his mental capacities. But um, within that, things are triggered that happen exponentially because everyone has a stake in its decline. Edmund, Edgar, Gloucester, the three sisters, um, uh, Lear, the fool, Kent, um, all these people don't assume that there's this linear progression from worshiping the pig's head, which is Lear, into, um, and they talk about Roman deities, not Christian 
deities, Roman deities in this. Um, uh, yeah, and everything crumbles exponentially, as we saw with a, f a black swan phenomena like COVID. Um, cost size decreases, size decreases, performance increases, time compresses, and this is part of the getting off island feeling of uh, AI. It's here. It cannot be ignored. You can't worship another pig's head to ignore the fact of AI or CRISPR. This is not to be left up to the state. This is not to be left up to um, normative ethics and morality. This is something to confront on its own terms. AI and genetic engineering. Otherwise, it will happen around you while you worship the pig's head. While you worship your own pig's head of like, oh sure, there'll be a job out there for me. You have to be in the, the, the now, but also thinking of the future for this. Um, uh, cost decreases, that was agriculture. At one time, this was 70, uh, America was 70% agricultural. Then it, I think it is down to three or four now, um, farmers. Most of these things for right or wrong were turned into corporate farming. There was some sort of, the law of the harvest gave us some sense of reward uh, from nature for our real work, which has now been translated into managerial capitalism, which it's anyone's guess where um, the carrot is in that. Plenty of sticks, uh, you don't know where the carrot lies. Um, that is exponential change. Um, Facebook, in 2005, Facebook didn't exist for most people. Twitter was a sound. Um, uh, 4G was a parking place and Skype was a typo. That's um, transformation. Um, we've gone from future so shock, I've read this book, to present shock, which is Doug Rushkoff. I read this book also, very interesting. In talking about the Kobayaski, um, the social semiotic uh, uh, sociologist um, who talks about we are the time binding animal, yet the contradiction is we're forced to live in the now with um, social media. We are using social media for our final project. And if you're upset about these wild directions because you're not don't quite have the polymath brain, um, uh, uh, submit to it. Submit to that these tentacles, these strains are important, are exponentially important, not progressively important um, in determining where we're going. Um, the older generation still does tell you guys, focus, just focus. Your problem is you don't want to focus. I contend ADD and ADHD <clears throat> or function of survival um, that we have short attention spans because we want to get off the island. We don't want to worship the pig's head in the sense that to focus is to focus on what? Worshiping a, worshiping a pig's head about going getting an MBA from the, a, a school where the better education, the better MBA would be getting out into the real world and, and finding how fast the tech sh sector shifts. Same in comp sci, same in biomedical engineering, same. Of course, we have to have an aptitude, but an aptitude that if we're training long and hard inside this student research warehouse where you're forklifted into place, so are research subjects. If there's no attention to getting off the monastery, you get off the monastery now and go back to your parents' houses um, where the, the individuation of leaving both was vitally important, um, uh, spiritually, vitally, personally, created a sense of responsibility and agency. And no matter how hard your life would be living with four other roommates or living in a room with the heat turned down to 50, um, living um, in a time where you're not making a commitment to another person for a, a future life. It's nice, but uh, in a sense, 
the, one of the main ob ob objectives is to get off the island. Rushkoff talks about the contradictions. You study long and hard. I've known so many PhD students who have actually, you know, um, blew a gasket um, because they're wondering if their field is out there. And certainly in academia, you can see what was studied 10, 20 years before. This is the flavor of the year. And next year it's replaced by another flavor. Um, the monastery is, is a retreat, is a place often, not always, to worship the pig's head and not to apply yourself to the real problems of getting off the island. And I don't mean Elon Musk's um, technocratic uh, application toward Mars, even if that incites us to think more cleverly how to scale back here and less about messing up this place and going to another place. Um, it's sparked a debate. Um, no matter what your view of change, it's inevitable that it will happen. Change is gonna come. Change is, here's, type it in, and change is scary. Change is scary quote. Change is scary but good. To go from your parents, studying long and hard, employing this neantony, which is post-uteral development, which now has been extended into your 20s, from um, uh, eight years old to 13 years old, now to uh, during agricultural. Um, there were no anti-child labor laws in agriculture. You were out there, even where I grew up amongst farm kids, you know, coming to school smelling like cow manure at seven in the morning because they were up at 5.30 raising the cows. Um, the sons would get the farm in a sexist fashion. The sons would usually get the farm. The, 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 the girls would have to marry another farmer or they would have to do a totally different plan. Um, the, this was uh, um, less or more sexist than the industrial and the managerial. I think they all had their their little algorithms built in. Um, rapid transformation creates opportunity. Yes, it does. So what are the big uh, exponential trends? Uh, century of the city. 70-80% um, of the world's population are moving to the city. Where's the food coming from? Oh, uh, harvesting robots. Okay. How is the the distribution of materials and costs and markets and in uh, neoliberal capitalism working? Oh, AI? Okay. Um, uh, what's that leave for me to be proud, to develop a skill, to get out of the unskilled worker, which um, driving truck was one of the last examples of, which is about to go the way of blockbuster video. Um, driving truck by computer is um, right around the corner um, and so forth. Uh, future of education, we're doing it. Century of the city-state, we're doing it. Who are you to be creative in the city to change your leisure time, hopefully not into um, Disneyland and garbage on Netflix and TikTok, but to sort of refine your leisure, leisure in a city and look for uh, people to commune with in that respect future of education must be task-based, must circulate around this idea of, of research and order and tenured people must continue book writing and um, research and trying to keep um, their um, reports from their lecturing up rather than becoming deans and sub-deans and contributing to the bloated infrastructure of uh, a modern university or college. It's just horrendous. I see the incentives. You're not, once you attain a level, level of specificity, you're the best in your profession. No one cares. The only place, because it's a little niche, it's a little tiny little uh, blade on the Swiss army knife, um, your only way of even advancing in this world to inflation is increasing your salary because by becoming a dean of student wellness. Um, universities are not retreats. They are not. That's the danger of the Lord of the Flies version. You are not, you are worshiping the pig's head if you think a university is a place of a comfort zone, a safe space. It is not.
it never will be those that are have a cancer in them. Um, they are not uneasy places. They're a place of stimulation to disseminate new ideas. Basta. That is it. Um, the culture of continual offense. At one point, no one's put on this earth to offend you. Um, you got to take uh, agency and responsibility for yourself, no matter what you think your identity is. Um, that is where, uh, if you worship identity, that is worshiping the pig's head. We all have similar features of identity, equitable housing, food, um, a, a job to earn this, to, as we saw in the movie, the future of work and death. Um, at essence, the psychology of worth is proving to the world that you're worthy of taking the stuff from the world with a certain cost. If we are on UBI, who will really be able to afford a BMW? Um, this will bifurcate cultures. If we ascribe, subscribe to pervasive AI, um, genetic engineering, designer babies, germline editing, we will bifurcate history. Things before, AI, before CRISPR and, and designer babies, things afterward. We are right on that cusp. This is happening exponentially within this 15 years. Um, it's my issue as well as your issue. That's, and as well as a 12 year old's issue. We, we exist together in that we have to make collective decisions because uh, government is usually all about um, good things, but also about worshiping pig's heads. The over bureaucratization, both of the social sector and of capitalism is something that emerged. There's a lot of people say, well, if we just keep reapplying what worked before, we'll get out of the woods, we'll, we'll get out of this mess. No, we won't. Um, because the changes have existed there. Surprise, surprise, are they really black swans that came out of nowhere? No. I'm a designer. I want to contribute to getting off the island. I don't want to be part of the problem worshiping another pig's head. Um, uh, I'm not offended by um, different opinions in trying to get off this island. Um, why to get off the island? We live in a global culture that is strained to the limit. Why? Um, 10 billion is perhaps the upper limit, but even that's too much. Many people think, have done the numbers, we're in a edge of a big Malthusian die off that there really needs to be, this is subject for an essay, um, down to one, two, or three billion people. Um, uh, seven billion people have to simply disappear. They're not going to do that willingly. This, this Malthusian meltdown about 2040 is going to make World War II and its unregulated capital markets look like a Boy Scout parade. Um, and that was a devastating war, um, global war. Um, uh, so we have to be aware that we are sharing this generation together because of these exponential advances. Citizen Doctor includes um, biomedical engineering, genetic engineering, germline editing, uh, uh, non-germline editing, which is plastic surgery and all these other enhancements. Um, uh, there's a theory I'm paraphrasing that I could take um, stem cell therapies <coughs> to ward off Alzheimer's. There's a great quote in that movie. It's like uh, 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 Alzheimer's and um, dementia and other mental decreases are not, um, uh, not the exception. They're the rule. Um, we are, even up until the 19th century, we're only living up to the age of about 30 because of whatever picking us off. Um, those who live beyond it, we do have cases of people living extremely old. Um, those were the exceptions. Um, to stay mentally fit in that older age is will be the exception. Um, this, uh, so the question arises, what is getting off the island? What is the pig said? How can I tell the difference? You're showing us an art form, which is supposed to, you saying, not contribute to 
the problem but contribute to a solution. Yes, I think um, leisure as it is constructed and certainly leisure, you all watch the movie uh, 15 Million Merits, which is essentially about UBI, very brilliant black mirror on the subject when all is said and done about UBI, universal basic income. Um, no more BMWs, no more this, no more that. The guy's living in an immersive bedroom, um, kept away from touch and contact uh, uh, with people, no um, sharing, no, uh, presumably no sex, except for the, the, um, the, the comic horrible aspects of, of the, the guy, main guy who's conducting these, these uh, adult channels. That's where it's channeled. It's a total uh, dysfunction, well, functioning dystopic society based on uh, the notion that people create their own UBI. Your ambition is to be on that treadmill. Perfect metaphor. Where are we going with these things? Will these be reduced so much? 3D printing came down in cost exponentially. Two or three years ago, I bought my 3D printer for 150 bucks. It's, uh, it's like a doorstop now. How do we keep up with this industry? Uh, quantified everywhere, this is problematic. Um, and we're seeing numbers and not uh, vitalism. We're not seeing the, 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 the unit is more than a sum of its whole, but everywhere we see um, the unit. Con uh, conscious brands, boo, hate this. Um, this means that your, even your leisure, your idea of agency, responsibility, your freedom in that slender time you have to put together to study more, to have a, 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 a love relationship, to raise a family, to, um, to not be formatted even in your one third of your life. If one third is sleeping, one third is working, this leisure is increasingly attacked and colonized, co using the word seriously, to colonize uh, leisure um, as that it can be pre-formatted. Uh, many other cultures, sometimes the Europeans are the best at avoiding the colonization of leisure. I think this is pervasive across the, the planet. Americans tend to want to quantify it, but then they have this rebellious freedom streak where they just want to do what they want to do. Um, fugue states, just chilling out zombie states are part of a, a common pop cultures like what's in between formatting your existence and going on. Another uh, black mirror, we're talking about quantified everywhere. Another black mirror that is interesting is um, uh, nosedive where uh, uh, Dallas Howard, Ron Howard's daughter, the actress, is a person, a woman who lives in social media quantification. I understand that this is used as a pervasive collectivist sort of thing in um, some Asian societies. China has its own um, social media in which you're actually judged in terms of having, wanting, being able to get credit. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of real. Conscious brands, again, uh, transforming things that should be about use into the pig's head. Um, why Coke, why Pepsi? They're both, they're both alike. Uh, one brand of cigarette over the other, they, they, all of them kill you. Um, Next thing, ancient wisdoms. This is kind of a weird ecumenical thing, pre-monotheistic uh, religions. Um, this can't be tacked on like a cell phone case. This comes over and evolved over years. It's, it's part of our epigenetics to look for meaning while we're living uh, completely, fully, using that, if we only have that one third time, what possible things could we put in it? You now, if by choice, by economics, by your parents' um, uh, uh, promotion, are living one third of your life, two thirds as students. Um, one third should be in sleep. It even encroaches on sleep. This is 
sleep patterns in industrialized world. In the Victorian age, uh, sleep went down to a bare minimum uh, because everyone was working. Um, let's go on. Cyborg marketing. I don't know what that means. Um, this is a little bit technophilic, but this means pervasive AI, I guess. The city-state. Um, let's go there. Um, Mega city defined as a metropolitan area with a population excess of 10 million people. This is the tri-state area. Um, the confluence around New York City, my hometown. Now, uh, I've lived in Tokyo, Seoul, Singapore, Rome, Massachusetts. Um, uh, and grew up in Minneapolis. Um, I've loved my time outside of the country in mostly these East Asian countries, giving me a great perspective. I advocate travel for everyone. There are 23 mega cities in the world now. By two, 2025, there'll be 37. Um, Tokyo is a city state. Um, more than more people live there in that city. I used to live in that city for a brief time under a Japan Foundation Award. Then live in Canada, which is fourth or fifth largest um, uh, uh, surface area country in the world. Um, it offers a new way of living as economies, community, work, infrastructure, and home are reconfigured as historic amounts of people consolidate. Okay. How are we living in these things? Um, the harvest law of value means um, we reap what we sow, simply put. This is an agricultural thing. Uh, barring pestilence, locusts, bad weather, early frost, things like that. What we put in is what we get out. Where is the margin of a profit coming from? That's a new industrial, post-industrial service idea. These people are going in to cities originally in the developing countries, as happened in China in the 90s, go into the city to these jobs. Again, I'm not leaving the topic of design. This is all in the rubric of, of population is just one factor. Clusters of innovators, influencers create a critical mass of critical culture. Uh, Half of the world now lives in cities by 2050. 70% of the world will be urban dwellers. Um, by then, only 14% of people in rich countries live outside cities and 33% in poor countries. Um, so there's the choice of the rich to live outside in their villas. Um, and a lot else will happen before that. A lot of other tipping point. Um, San Fran been there a couple times not impressed um, as a larger economy than out of Switzerland Belgium Taiwan and Sweden um, uh, the tech sector center of, of this sort of urban confluence of tech sectors there mayors of new kings this is Bloomberg riding uh, the subway um, uh, scarcely have been over to his house before what is life like in the city state of the future there it is there's your apartment um, 72 percent of americans say economic downturn has helped me prioritize what's important in my life design um, people live in smaller spaces duh um, but now a space like this in manhattan for four thousand bucks a month is absurd um, but the possibilities, the potential, yeah, they're there. They're more there. But um, uh, at some point, we have to stop drinking the Kool-Aid, worshiping the, the pig's head, and get back to what is useful about remedying things like this. Um, sustainable living is a must. Um, production... Um, People will share everything. This is a crowdfunding is usually called crowd fleecing. Um, currently valued at 26 billion, the sharing economy, uh, Wayfair, Etsy, some eBay, Craigslist, all these things about sharing at these um, 
uh, horizontal levels uh, are an important part of our culture. It's an important way of recycling, important part of the, I talked about the long tail, uh, but is it really viable? Drones delivering everything, boo. This is stupid George Jetson stuff, but it might show up, who knows. 33% of, 38% have a side gig, duh, because they can't, uh, over 50, 60% of your income is spent on your rent. Um, what it takes to own a house, which means what it takes to make a bank own your house is uh, often insurmountable. The concept of ownership is being evaluated. Um, the concept of use value is uh, being evaluated. Uh, Americans have a side gig, freelancing, working a second job or running their own business. Um, I've done that in my career. I still have, I have a design business. Um, uh, this is increasing as one of the liberatory aspects out of Eisenhower America was that one needed two members, adult members of their household, husband, wife, to go out and work to bring back enough capital. Um, the children are often latch, latchkey children. You're given the key to your house. You go there after school. Um, you don't play with the gas or get into the, the medicine cabinet. Um, and this is a, a feature around the world of, of both genders working. Um, 61 per se, it's very important that I make a difference in my community. Somehow, um, it is pleasant to be in cafes and to say hi to people in your neighborhood and it, it feels like a sense of self-invention. -in Transportation becomes automated. Don't read while you're driving. Um, this seems to be coming on. As I said, the last untrained job on the face of the earth, driving a truck, um, which does take training and skill, um, is going away. Um, do we have Luddites for this? Do, uh, do we have people busting the computers that command the AI? Um, I don't think we can. Um, that genie has been let out of the bottle. Uh, smaller transformable, builds unique 3D space, communities within the system, rent it, lend it, or trade it, um, a change of sense of ownership. But in a neoliberal capitalist economy, the ownership, even allowing a bank to own your mortgage so you can have this more or less false impression of ownership until you lose your job, um, is uh, is made necessary by uh, the artificial shortages placed on the market. We can't, I'm a designer, we can design affordable houses. I'm totally intrigued by the tiny house movement. Um, I think it is uh, one of the last examples of American ingenuity and um, must be embraced. Um, this idea of this fleecing, the idea that you're going to, the pig's head worship Eisenhower America, that somehow owning a house that you can barely make the payments on, having an obedient spouse who reflects your ego and so forth, these notions of harmony run against tens of thousands of years of human nature. Um, not a good pony to bet on. Um, and I'm not talking about um, a moral fiber being degraded. I'm talking about not worshiping that pig's head anymore. Um, going on future, job of the future, central micro -mag manufacturing zone planner. Uh, too many words, hate it. Take an app approach to services. Um, these are problematic things, as you already seen. Uh, create the micro homestead, micro farming to power generation. The whole utopian thing, oh, just put a vegetable garden. I put a vegetable garden out here um, and you'll feel complete. Um, really? Um, you go to Whole Foods and give your whole paycheck, uh, Trader Joe's, all these other formatted things through industrial scale farming. We've tr created Franken animals out on grazing cows, the amount of 
carbon footprint and and use of fresh water it takes to make one hamburger is still part of this equation um, content network topic clusters manifestations um, this is how this PR group assembled their notion of design uh, describes the core concept of each trend okay so let's see um, um, their content networks topic clusters manifestations um, this is how it's manifested in our discovered from nature and order nature deficit urban I hate these Orwellian newspeak words um, crowd IQ usually dumb but there's Strowacki wrote the good book um, the wisdom of crowds and how to predict the the weight of an animal through a crowd source thing um, and so forth um, robots w robotic world robo apocalypse ro apocalypse robotic workforce what it will do to change your job subject of that movie I'm a designer I'm a designer I'm a designer I'm trying to forge new useful forms of use that are also aesthetic um, that are also cosmopolitan that are also self-critical um, I do not subscribe to the culture of continual offense I'm not offended if someone dislikes my work I am little miffed if they don't want to discuss it that they've accepted a dogmatic part same goes with my teaching I would I'm here to elicit a conversation um, create interlocutors usually for life uh, my good students come back we work on gigs together out there in the so-called real world we we keep in touch we form a community um, a community centers around the research at hand right now it's immersive environments AR and VR why it seems to be blipping on some radar somewhere um, I'll follow it as far as I can follow it I used to do infrared I used to do EEGs I the, the limits on that I discovered are the the amount of, of reliable equipment but the initial ideas were fun and stimulating stimulated discourse life edited I hate these um, compact living the new spaces this is you know we're given less um, partial kool-aid drinking stay tuned the future of education so the these sparks and honey do all of these things this is um, a lecture right now uh, we'll stop for the next one